Okay, our next topic is urinary tract infections. We're going to start off with cystitis. The symptoms of cystitis are any patient that comes in with dysuria, urgency, frequency, or burning on urination. And if a patient comes in with any of these symptoms, you want to assume they have cystitis, but you also want to look for a urethritis or cervicitis if the patient is sexually active. So if the patient comes in with dysuria, urgency, frequency, and burning, first thing you're going to do, your analysis. And what are you going to look for on that urinalysis? You're going to look for bacteria, white blood cells, leukocyte esterase positivity, or nitrates. And your most accurate step is culture. So the patient comes in with these symptoms, you're going to first do a urinalysis, then you're going to do a culture, and you're going to treat them empirically, okay? You're going to do trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole for three days, or if they're resistant to trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, you're going to do ciprofloxacin. But the main thing you want to remember for the test is that you do not wait for culture in order to treat them. You just treat them based on the symptoms. Prophylaxis for cystitis. Patients with three or more episodes of UTI over the last 12 months should get prophylaxis. By prophylaxis, what do I mean? Your best prophylaxis is postcoital prophylaxis, okay? And if postcoital prophylaxis fails, then we can go to continuous antibiotic therapy. And a third option is actually a short course of antibiotics that some people use, but that's usually people who self-medicate themselves based on their repeated, uh, repeated cystitis, and it's actually the least efficacious. So our best prophylaxis is postcoital, but if postcoital fails, you can go to continuous antibiotic therapy. Now, there's complicated cystitis, okay? And complicated cystitis is known as patients who come in with diabetes patients who are male, patients who have symptoms more than seven days, um, a patient that may have an obstruction, they may have a stone, they may have a, a, a stricture or a tumor. This is known as complicated cystitis, and complicated cystitis actually gets trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole for seven days instead of three days. And alternatively, just like regular treatment for three days, you can give ciprofloxacin. And you have to remember all male patients have to get an ultrasound to look for anatomical abnormalities. Okay, next, pyelonephritis. Pyelonephritis presents very similar to cystitis. They're going to come in with urgency, with the dysuria, with the frequency, except the patient's going to be more acutely ill and they're going to present with a flank pain and tenderness. They're going to have a CVA tenderness on percussion. And by more acutely ill, what do I mean? By more acutely ill, this patient is actually going to come in with a higher fever. Okay. Um, this patient's going to come in looking more sick than the cystitis patient. And they're also going to have flank pain and tenderness. First thing we're going to do for pyelonephritis, urinalysis, which is the same thing as cystitis, right? Except this time on pyelonephritis, we're going to look for pyuria or white blood cell casts. Remember, white blood cell casts are pathognomonic for pyelonephritis. So if we see that, you're going to know that the patient has pyelonephritis. And inpatient versus outpatient therapy. Inpatient therapy is given for more severe disease, and we're going to treat the patient with IV ampicillin or gentamicin for severe cases um, and we're going to consider hospitalization in these patients and outpatient we're going to treat them with oral ciprofloxacin and we're going to closely monitor these patients um, once we've treated them as an outpatient and if a patient's given the treatment and they haven't responded after five to seven days you want to do a CT or an ultrasound and look for something called a peri nephric abscess. Now, perinephric abscess is a rare complication of pyelonephritis, but you have to do a sonogram or a CT if a patient with pyelonephritis has not responded to treatment after five or seven days, and we're going to look for this perinephric abscess. And if we see something there, we're going to actually biopsy this, and if the biopsy shows us we have a perinephric abscess, we're going to treat, uh, we're going to treat this perinephric abscess with a fluoroquinolone and an anti-staphylococcal penicillin such as oxacillin. And finally we're going to go to our last topic which is prostatitis. 
Prostatitis has the same symptoms, once again, as, as cystitis, which is frequency, urgency, dysuria, except these patients are going to have perennial or sacral pain, and they're going to have spiking fevers, chills, cloudy urine, and a tender prostate on digital rectal, rectal exam. Now, unlike pyelonephritis and cystitis, we're actually going to do a urine culture first in prostatitis. Remember, we're going urinalysis first in cystitis and pyelonephritis, but in prostatitis, we're going to go urine culture first, then we're going to do a prostatic massage, and then we're going to urine culture again after the prostatic massage. And if it comes positive for prostatitis, we want to treat with fluoroquinolone for 14 days, and in chronic prostatitis, we're going to extend this treatment to one month with a fluoroquinolone, or if we're using trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazole, and chronic prostatitis, we're going to ex extend the treatment for three months. Now, an important point to remember is that all these patients have symptomatic bacteria, right? So cystitis, dysuria, urgency, frequency, and same thing in pyelonephritis, same thing in prostatitis, except we have flank pain in pyelonephritis and perennial or, uh, or sacral pain in prostatitis. But what I want you to remember is that in asymptomatic bacteria, the only patients that need to be treated are pregnant patients, okay? So do not treat asymptomatic bacteria unless the patient is pregnant. So all these cases are assuming that the patient has symptoms uh, describing this urinary tract infection. And I think this is a good comparison chart to compare all the three urinary tract infections. And there's just a couple of distinguishing characteristics um, to differentiate between them. And if you know that, as well as your diagnostic steps and your treatments, as, long, uh, as well as your prophylaxis, you'll be good for the test.